All right, guys. So I want to do a video about this. We actually are retiring our TV antenna. Now, I've done a lot of research. And as far as I know, this is the largest optimized, like computer optimized, TV antenna that's privately owned by a person and has been erected on a tower. Okay, so now you see it on the ground. We lowered it down, actually. It had snapped the mounts, and I'll show you that later. But originally, it was up there. So, you can just imagine at about 35 feet off the ground. So, this is kind of a oversized clone of the Ch Channel Master 4251, which was a parabolic, but it was only like a 6-footer or 5-footer. This is a 10-foot, actually 10.5-foot satellite dish, all right, with mesh. And then it's got the four-point outriggers that we connected to a centralized point, which is a piece of PVC, so it wouldn't interfere. And here you have a two-bay bow-tie antenna with rod reflectors down the back. Another thing you'll notice is... These are closed bow ties, solid aluminum. All right, usually on the bow tie antennas, you'll see that they have just two pieces of wire that come out and the, the inside is just a field. So this is actually solid. It does change the way it works. Um, one of the things I wanna say about this thing is it was channel designed and computer optimized by Hollins and he's on a digital forum and he put it through the four neck program to optimize it out uh we came up with some numbers i mean there's different scales of decibel meter there's dbd dbi um and if you've ever bought an antenna or know anything actually about antennas about everything you buy in the store they lie about the gain on it so Put it this way, I've never seen the numbers on any chart get honestly as high of any optimized antenna as this. I believe there's a channel range part where it hits 23 um, on the DVD. So let's go around the backside and I'll show you why we had to take it down. And then we'll talk more about the overall antenna and what its uses was and why we don't need it anymore. Okay, now we're on the back side. You can see the centralized pipe here is steel. This whole unit weighs somewhere around 200 pounds. Uh, even though it's aluminum, just there's so much weight there with bolts and different things. And then we left the kick out mount on for more strength. But what we had here, and there's two of them here, there was a third one. But you can see the wind actually twisted it and broke the broke the u-bolts okay and i also had secondary lines tied to it just to be sure but yeah it snapped those in the wind and we ended up having to bring it down now originally this was designed to pick up one station but there's more to that story and I'm going to go back around front of this and just run you up another view of where it was. It was way up there. So we'll go around front and talk about channel optimization and what we did. Okay. So this thing was actually built to pick up channels in West Virginia. I'm in Ohio. I'm um, actually down in Southeast Ohio, down by Old Man's Caves, Logan, Ohio area. And we were shooting for West Virginia. Now, due to not wanting to have a bunch of issues, I'm not going to tell you where we were pointing it at. But also in the UHF band, and this is why you have to be careful when you buy antennas. Anything that says you can pick up anything over 80 miles is lying to you. 
The curvature of the earth makes it nearly impossible to go over 80 miles. That's just a fact. And the UHF band, that's as far as it pretty much can go. You could have some stuff bounce around if you've got a body of water or just the right weather. We call it tropo, which basically means there's enough moisture in the air for the signal to jump a little farther. That's why sometimes at night and in stormy or snowy weather, you can pick up channels from crazy far away. But this was made with an actual point in mind. There's a channel called Ion, and it wasn't in our Columbus market or any of our local markets down here. And my wife really wanted it. And it's got different shows that they play back to back, like Blue Bloods and Law and Order and other stuff like that. A lot of shows that she really likes. And then in the holidays, they play holiday movies. So we attempted to go after it. And then I found out that there is a military base slash like a telescope on this military base in West Virginia. And above it is a no fly and no radio wave zone. So it's just like a dead spot. They basically jam all signals above it. All right. So the tower for ion was on the other side of this thing. So no matter how big an antenna I built, I couldn't get through it. And it just made me upset. So one day we were looking through and we saw this parabolic channel master antenna had a really high gain. And I said to myself, well, I'd like to find one of those. So I started looking around and couldn't find any. And I said, let's just build one and go bigger. So I got on the digital forums and a guy named Hollins was nice enough to work with me some and uh, optimize this out for me, running it through the four neck program. And then after he did his run through, I took his specs in the four neck program and pulled out all the measurements and specced it out as possibly close as we could with what we were actually working with and came up with this. Now it took four people to raise this thing up. All right. Four people to get this thing all the way up 35 or 40 feet, whatever you want to say, depends on where you're measuring the middle of the top of the dish, but we turned it. And we blasted right through that no radio zone that they have jammed out there and picked up ion. Now that was only during the winter because as you can see, there's trees everywhere, but it worked. Now, about two months, three months after we put this up, they opened ion in the Columbus market, which is only like 40 miles from us. The actual tower is only 40 miles from us. So this basically became irrelevant. We didn't actually need that much power, but it was always something fun to do. And, you know, it was kind of nice. And then when people saw it, their eyes just kind of popped out of their head and they just couldn't believe it. When you stood under this thing, it was massive. I mean, you just felt scared to stand there. And, uh, it was always a running joke that guys in suits in a black helicopter would come arrest me sometime for, uh, blasting through their no radio wave zone or you know that I should wear a little aluminum hat because I talk to aliens with it so I uh I'm gonna put some pictures up kind of give you an idea what it what it looked like and all that and we'll walk up here and I'll give you one more point to show one thing I didn't show is how it's connected they're actually soldered straight on copper wires on either side at the middle point where the bow ties are connected and then it goes to a channel master ball in there just kind of wanted to get some documentation of this before we take her all the way apart and break her down she's going to go to the scrap yard but i i could pick up channels out of uh i think it was kvky out of kentucky I could pick up channels. Well, actually, one time when the wind had turned it and started breaking it, it turned it towards Dayton, and we were picking up stuff out of Dayton, which we shouldn't be able to really do that. But it holds the whole spectrum of the UHF. It doesn't do very well in the VHF spectrum at all. Not that there's that many channels left for that spectrum. But overall, it was a fun project. Um, I wouldn't attempt it again, to be honest. I jokingly tell my wife every time we see a satellite dish, because we just saw a 12 footer the other day, I said, honey, let's build another one. And she just absolutely doesn't want to hear it. 
She doesn't want to hear it. She doesn't want to be a part of it. Bringing this one down, just bringing it down, took three people and two ropes and me on that ladder, hand carrying it down. So I don't think I'm going to talk her into going any bigger. But, you know, for a moment, for a short period of time, we had the biggest residential computer optimized parabolic TV antenna owned by any one person. And that's kind of fun to say. Something that my grandkids won't believe. That's why I'm doing this video. So I'll put some pictures and some different things. Look for the picture where it's up on the tower and you'll see me standing behind it and how small I am compared to this dish. So until next time, I'm Tony with Our World Outdoors.